Okay, I still need a whiteboard and notch, but in the meantime, I've got paper. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Auto Bravado channel. So, I have a new engine code, P0420. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with this. That's a catalytic converter failure. I also have P0430. I didn't write it down. You know, I, I know what's up with that. Uh, I was waiting for those codes to come up. I was like, well, those back sensors are starting to flap a little. I'm surprised that code hasn't set. A couple months later, they set. I got a P0328. Scanner Danner just did an excellent video on that. So, yeah, I'm going to be out shining when I plan the show. But he's right. Pretty much on a Nissan, you see that. You can just change the sensor. Mine's on top of the intake. I mentioned a little bit before. But those are not what I'm focusing on right now. I've got a P0138 and a P0463. They both have to do with fuel. One says a fuel level sensor circuit is high input. Forgive me. I'm not going to do any electrical diagnosis that is apparent at this time. It's really obvious to me what happened. When I changed the fuel pump a little over a year ago, the uh, fuel sending unit did not survive. There isn't even one in the truck. <laughs> so when that code popped up and I was upset, I was like, what's wrong? Oh. Well, of course, it's got a code for that. So it knows that it doesn't know what its fuel level is. It also knows it doesn't know what fuel temperature it is from the Prio 138 fuel temperature sensor A circuit high input. Apparently, it thinks it's high input when it gets no input. It must be how it's set up and how it works. Apologies, I got the garage door open. You can hear the neighbors a bit. I might have to reshoot that. I might not. Maybe it'll make you feel like you're at home in the neighborhood with me. Okay, we have a solution to get into this truck bed. It's called a really long 18 on the bottom and a 17 from a uh, pulley set. So that's designed to get pulleys. It's got an extension to be longer. Is it releasing? Yep. We're doing the truck being uh, truck lean method to get the fuel sending unit and a new fuel pump while we're in there installed since the check valve seems to be broken. It's just twisting. Are we taking the thing all the way off or just partially? We just need enough to raise it some so we can lean it. We've already dropped the uh, if it's loose should we get a smaller wrench? It could be easier. <laughs> Okay. It's actually almost flush. It's almost flush? Yeah. A couple more twists and it'll be flush. Oh, so it's out a lot. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on to the other one. Let's. So before you drop your bumper, get your two lights out or one like I have that's left. And unfortunately, you are going to need a very short 17. And it can't be a socket. That doesn't work. But this serpentine tool worked. Car problems got your head in the sand. triumphant. You have a champion to help you. Huzzah! Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobobotto.com <laughs> Dump truck. Nope. Gotta loosen it up some more before we get to this fuel pump. Sorry, John. Okay, so it's got four bolts on the to hold the frame down. Don't be fooled by two pillars in the center that are held on by gravity and just sit. So there's two bolts, two bolts in the front, four in the back. Loosen the very back one so that this, when you lean it back, doesn't hit the floor. And have jack stands ready to sit on the frame. And it's a two-man lift. Trust me. Still doesn't go. That's it. We gotta loosen it further. That went farther, right? Yeah, it went farther. Okay. So I guess we're getting progress. Okay, I'm a doofus. The bolts are all loosened and ready to go, but the filler neck and the bunch of evap lines that hook up underneath, I won't be able to film that. But there's two that you can see, one that you can't by camera probably. 
Got to take those off. That's what's holding everything down. What, oh, you can see it. Just barely. Here's the bolt for that. I pull these three items and it's up. So loosen it probably with a 10 and uh, two clamps. And then the whole thing will go up. All right, let's see if it goes up. Thanks to talking about it for the video, we realized there's the gas filler tube that's holding on. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, you can get your side. Are you safe? Yeah. Do you want to take a break? No. I haven't got my side yet, I'm just trying to move it. It's not high enough. Is it coming down? Or what? Okay, we can set it on this. Okay, you want to come over here and put this one in? Yeah. It's a little bit precarious. Do you have it in your hands? No. Where is it? I don't know. Oh. Wherever you put it. Okay, I think, yeah. Okay, now we can get the other one, I'm sure, footing. Okay. Okay. I think we might be in. Here's a lot better with new tires than last time with the old tires. If you're curious, there's an EVAP system. Since I'm doing some work on that on my other car. Oh. Okay. So this is what was holding on. This guy right here at 10. And these two little guys are easily done with your right angles. And now all I've got to do is do these little screws, which I think instead of doing them as screws, like last time, I'll do them as eight millimeters. That's my best guess. And then I can replace this sending unit. And the fuel pump while I'm at it, I, I confirmed the check, the fuel pump uh, builds pressure in the fact that there's no fuel trims when you really step on it. But there's a lot of fuel trim, excuse me, there's no fuel trim issues. It's like perfect. But when, uh, when you first try to start the truck, you can tell the check valve is bad because you gotta crank it over a couple of times to get the pressure back up so it'll run. I confirmed that after it sits, I undid the fuel rail and there was no fuel pressure. So it's all draining back into the tank. Uh, a couple of things that I had to watch out for is these little biscuits for the different points, move. There's another one at the corner. And you have to be very careful to leave those in place and not lose them. If you notice, sometimes they hang and that could fall off. I'm in a hurry because I'm already smelling the fumes. I should reduce the time on that as much as possible. John's a regular. He's the third time in the video. Um, so these were, I was right, they're 8mm, don't use the screw, use the socket, you got a power, little ratcheting power tool, it's awesome. As soon as I broke this, I thought about all the dirt that's been falling on me, and I don't want it in the fuel tank. So we're going to hit it with air, and you have the air hose, or... <coughs> You'll find I do help him with this stuff too, I just haven't finished editing it yet. Depends on which ones I get to, which ones I think will be more exciting. Okay, I knew there was one more screw where I blow it away. Yeah, okay. The electricals were, were obvious. Just push on it. The fuel, I think, is as obvious. We'll see. I have no idea. I didn't have to do it before because I wasn't replacing the sending unit. Okay. Well, I didn't do it. But this little plastic thing it has tabs on both sides. Mm -hmm. That would help. John did that one. I didn't. And yeah, you're right, John. This one is cockeyed. Um, but... If I can 
get the right size tool without dropping it in the gas tank to get this line undone. It's not a sign. And this is going to be aftermarket because I've done this job before. So don't rely on me for the size because it's whatever came with the kit. And that's why I bought New Harbor. Uh, they're breaking just like the last one. I can't spend 99 cents on a socket holder at Harbor Freight. I just can't. Okay, what size is it bigger than? It's bigger than a 6. The one that I broke off. I just barely got this replaced, John. I'm already breaking it. I got an even, even better one. I've had a set of socket deep wells. I bought for a specific job when I was in high school. The socket holder had held together all these years. John Michael played with them this afternoon while we were taking care of the family stuff. Yeah. Pull the holder off. Oh my gosh. It's been good <laughs> since high school and now your son broke it. Yeah. Wow. I should have been watching a little closer. <laughs> They did four of them up before I stopped them. <laughs> I put them back on, but I don't know if I did it right. I'll, che I'll check it out later. Well, it's not. He's four. He's supposed to take them apart. Yeah, my son likes them too. I can kind of sort of remember being like six or seven, and pulling a tricycle apart. And one, oh, you did a tricycle? And wondering if that was how my dad was going to be how I couldn't put it back together. <laughs> wow. I can't remember how old I was, Oh, it's barely on there. And what's bad is this is going to splash down in the tank and I'm going to have to find it. I just know it. I don't want to lose it. Well, I guess that, that's... I'll be fine because that's hooked to the fuel pump and the fuel pump has to come off anyway. There's two lines that I have to undo. There's an electrical line that runs the fuel pump. I know I'm giving my audience just no shot of this. But uh, electrical's off. Gas pressure's off. Now gas return. That's the gas return. That just floats in there. It doesn't care where it's at. I mean, I know it has a home, but... I really didn't care. It's a return. And this guy, I broke off the last time. But again, it's a return line. It, it doesn't matter. Not really. I guess if you don't want to aerate your gasoline, it matters. You know, now that it's free, I will worry about this from somewhere more comfortable. Okay. Old one, new one. I've already moved this over. And this I almost put on, but you can't because you have to move these tabs over. Unfortunately, I lost the rubber top when I moved my tool chest home. And thankfully, these tabs come off easy. Uh, they feel like they're going to break. Okay, I need something to pick from the inside. Yes! There's a drawer I've put away. Oh, yes! Okay. So this guy needs to be... Earlier, every time I looked for something, it wasn't in the drawer I keep it in because I moved my tool chest here. For my, quote, time off, unquote. <laughs> Someone commented in my video today that they're always looking for subtext. Let's see if they pick up on that subtext. Oh, there we go. That worked. Just keep trying with your pick and get these little tabs over the hump. And I bet it goes on the new one easy. Yeah, it goes on easy and off hard. Just like in how an engineer thinks. 
Sorry if you're an engineer watching. I know I have one engineering fan. No, you need it to work right. I'm, I'm not get, trying to give engineers a hard time. Seriously, I have an electrical engineer that, that follows my channel. He's gone into doing a few automotive things. Stuzman 52. Yeah. Does it need to come out? Yeah, that still needs to come off. It looks like it's got a different kind of connector on it. This is a return. I'm not sure how important it is for the return to fall, have the fuel fall instead of drip. I don't know why that matters. Is it because it's like a fish tank, except you don't want to keep the fish alive in your gas tank? <laughs> um, I obviously broke this off last time. When I push down on it, I see that interior piece not move with it. Do you see it now? Mm -hmm. um, we need to push that piece in. I don't know. I'm about to be brutal like I was last time. I really don't care. Down. I do have more picks. I think I resealed. It resealed. Okay, now I've gone through it on this side. So the tab's not even there anymore. I think I'm going to round it on this one. Like I said last time, I just ripped it off. I don't care. tabs are going to be a lot easier from this side. That bone went through my finger on that. Maybe I should call this video the fuel pump, the hackway. <laughs> Eric the car guy did a video named that. It was a uh, body repair of the hackway. What was it? Well, basically he used a newspaper and he or a piece of cardboard to put some kind of hardening compound against to create a surface that he could put a rubber sill on to stop water from from rusting away his trunk. Hmm. He lives in Ohio. He's got a meet up every year. Get your finger out of the way for when it goes through.
I think it's time for a surgical tool. Surgical tool. Do you have a surgical tool that's perfect for this? Oh. I don't know where it is. I already have it out, sort of. Judd Alice, surgical tool. Oh. Hmm. $7.99 on Amazon. Um, it's got some writing on it, I was just wondering what that was. Excuse me. Probably a size or something. It says Pulax yeah, 41. Probably, probably names. Okay. Judd Alice. It's soft, but hard holding. I used it on O2 sensors I've broken off because they wouldn't release. And voila. Works great on flesh, works great on plastic. Just want to make sure there's no debris that's going to get into the fuel for my hack job of removing that. Hey, when you break it off, you know where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we have our drain. Um, there's a clamp to hold this one on. It's no longer stock because these melt in fuel. Thanks, Nissan. <laughs> My last one was half melted. Hmm. Um, get the fuel hook to here, you got your fuel sending unit here and also a temperature probe thus two codes because the engine can't see this and the engine can't see that I'll put the codes down over here mm. fuel pump comes in more than just plastic, they also wrap it I don't want it dirty so I'm going to take my gloves off I don't have the old fuel pump out yet, I hate doing that I mean, I think my gas tank's almost empty, but how do I know? This was my fuel sending unit. <laughs> it's a Delphi just like the last one. Am I my fool? The last one's warranty ran out. But I got this on a good deal. And it's lifetime warranty at AutoZone instead of one year warranty. So I should be good to go. When I get the old one off, I've got to put the fuel sock on. I remember it wasn't a very good one. I don't remember where I got it. i got to put that clamp hose on here. And here, electrical line needs to come off the old one. No, it doesn't. This is where you get to do some electrical work, dude. Hey, I think I left that in my new toolbox, so. Alright, so all these parts come with it. If I remember correctly, I still have leftover parts from the last kit. That doesn't seem right, unless... Oh! Sock thin this! Those last guys who sold me a pump, I was missing this part. That makes more sense, because I didn't think that would, sock would stay on. It did, but apparently I was lucky. Okay, um... We replaced these. Since the stock ones work, I'll, I'll stick with it, because these hold everything together. I, is that a good guess? These were to hold the few lines in? Probably and electrical. So, have this pre-clicked together. I'd just try to use the old one. If there's no sort of reason. Because I've already done that work, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one I unattached here should reattach just fine because it's only a year old. Unless that is different. I and I don't remember since it was over a year yeah. ago. So highly aware it's over a year ago. My twelve sixteen, my my uh, warranty was over. Okay, so I need to get the old one, get the sock on, and then hopefully not use this at all. And I'll have a couple extra clamps and electrical doohickeys that I won't need since we'll use it on the old one. That's a good plan. I get to go fish for the old one now. Detach. I think they missed that part. <laughs> That's okay. We did it on the other one. Let's see if the 
old one fits or if we have to go with a new one, which is bad because then we have to do new battery connections. This is basically battery power. Yeah, they shafted us. They have a new way to connect. We're on backwards. Please say I'm just backwards. That, that felt really good. Okay. Backwards, frontwards. Do you have any reason to not use the old one? Say so now. Well, this one I have to use old regardless. I took a quick look because it looks... I see scoring on there, do you? Like an electrical burning? Mm -hmm. Looks more like a little bit of corrosion. And they didn't give me a new one of this, so it's not like I can replace the only part that's corroded. Because the other part looked really good, probably because it's always in fuel. This sometimes gets fuel, sometimes it doesn't. And it's the air that gets you. Okay. The sock is still on the bottom of the tank. By the way, just rip it out. Don't try to find the tank. Just pull really hard and it doesn't break. It survived it a few times. Probably should use something stronger than my tech. Did I already have a screwdriver out? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't see one. Okay. There we go. And the other side will just slide off. That's from my red rag. So this is the old one. Fuel's still coming out of it. I see a lot of corrosion in the tank, which is sad because I cleaned all the corrosion last time. But most of the corrosion's where I couldn't reach. Do you remember which way it went in? I didn't pay attention. I think it'll probably only go one way. That's what it feels like. So they gave me a new rubber piece for the bottom. What about the bottom filter? Yeah, I know. Right, I, don't, I don't see how the bottom filter will even work. I don't see a bottom filter on the old one either. It's on the bottom of the tank. Huh. See, last time I had to use the old one. And the old one's a half moon, so that the sock has a way to work. This new thing from Delphi, I don't think the sock can go on. I guess I have to reach in there and find out. I shouldn't get embarrassed that I do videos in front of John. I forget to record some important points. Okay, so basically what I did is first you drop the bumper. And this bracket holds it up, and you take your 18 millimeters. Fortunately, there's not a lot of space, so you can't use your air tool unless you like use your 3 8 or half inch ratchet or whatever. But uh, I don't have a real strong one of those, so I mostly did it by hand. Uh, well, I do have a strong one, I don't have a strong enough air compressor to run it at home. It's annoying that I always have to change fittings when I come home. Eventually, if I stay at a shop long enough, I will uh, match them up at home and at work again. But right now, I'm moving shops again. So, we've got 14s to hit the body points all along. This was too flat to get uh, the top side of the bolt right in here. Basically, you got three of these. Two close. This one we just loosened. And if we loosened a bit more, I'd have more space under there. It'd be easier. And then there's another one that is there. And then you go all the way to the front of the vehicle, practically, before you get to the next one. Because the next two points that hold, these two bars just sit 
on rubber, half of which I'm hiding with a jack stand. And these are what you're careful not to lose on the top. Underneath there's metal ones that kind of hang up until they decide to fall down. Wow, look at how everything's rusting under there. I really want to just sand and paint it. I really do. I've actually already bought the paint for it. And I have a good sander. Um, so lots of 14s for underneath. The top bolt was 17. Usually you wouldn't have to play with it, but the very back ones tend to spin on you. Um, there's supposed to be these flange pieces. This one came out entirely. They sometimes do that. So it's flange, rubber, frame of the truck, metal, nut. That's how they all go together. Uh, I've already used this video a couple times to make sure I was reassembling the fuel pump correctly. And I'm just going to put away my tools in case someone tries to break in the garage that they'd also have to break in to my new tool chest. I have just taken a short video of that. So hopefully I'll release that eventually too. Oops, standing up. Oh. Okay, we stopped for the night, unfortunately. So I'm out, out of the truck because use tomorrow because of all the rust in this sucker. I cleaned all the rust out of the fuel tank except one patch I couldn't get to because of plastic and that one spot is rusting bad and the rest has a very light tinge of rust. I can see why they went to plastic fuel tanks. I mean ethanol bad. I need to use a regular treatment or something or just not worry about this. Um, there's no inline filter on this truck. This is the only one I believe and socks are like a gross filter. They let little things through. So maybe this is what clogged up my check valve. I don't know. Uh, looking at the old pump, it's got a dinge of rust on it. Um, I still need to move its connector over. And get these really tight. I made it home with the pressure of fuel with this disconnected but my fuel trim suddenly went really rich when I did this over a year ago I didn't have this on really tight actually worse than that I didn't even use these talk about a rookie mistake that's before I went pro that's my excuse <laughs> uh, yeah starting a new shop in a few days another pay raise I would have stayed but well <sighs> That'll come out when you hear more of the work I did on my uh, buttery's car, perhaps. I didn't feel safe at work. There was a violent criminal that worked there, and they did get rid of him. So I don't have the guts. To, I don't have the guts to share that. Now the kit comes with this dinky thing. You need that. Seven point nine millimeter or five sixteenths. That's what worked. This is in between SAE, so use use a Phillips screwdriver. The top one fell in there. I'm going to leave it. If it stays at the bottom of the gas tank, I don't think it will rust much. It's what hits air that rusts a lot. So do keep your tank gas topped off on one of these. That's what took out the fuel first fuel tank. I mean, I cleaned a lot of rust off, like a thick thick film of jelly ethanol -y goo last time. Years of the truck sitting. Clean it all off. Maybe I should have painted it with fuel resistant paint. I have no idea. Um, these were endured to 8mm. I really shouldn't shoot this as a master shot because then it takes more effort to edit it out. Hey! Progress on the Chevy. Head bolts are out. Camshafts are even out. I got to get oil on these. Uh, right now they're still kind of oily, but I, I don't want to lose those beautiful glossy surfaces. Um, need to get a nice thing for that. Well, I'm going to stop recording, <clears throat> put my tools away so I'm good for the night. Quick tip for you when you leave your cabin light on when you're looking for tools, it's okay to leave it on a 2 amp charge overnight because a real slow charge 
and uh, that's just safe to do. So I'm going to let this charge since I left the dome light on while I was looking for some tools and that should keep things going smooth here. Remember, get out there and work on something or you might get whiny like he's been because he wasn't on camera. <laughs>